Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. This is St. Louis on the Air from St. Louis Public Radio. I'm Elaine Cha. Because if he does that, that person will lose election automatically. Classes at St. Louis University for, for nursing. Again, similar to what my last answer, they don't even really want to have an, a chance of that occurring. The city of St. Louis is not going to elect a Republican circuit attorney, even if that person does um, an incredible job. Jason, who's going to want this job in this moment? Or, you know, to take it at the very least? It was just a few days ago, last Thursday afternoon to be exact, that St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner announced on Twitter that she would resign effective June 1st. Last week's news was the culmination of intense criticism of Gardner and her alleged mismanagement of the office. That criticism ramped up in February when a visiting volleyball player was struck downtown by a driver out on bond. That driver had violated the conditions of his bond more than 50 times. Since that time, a stream of attorneys has continued to leave the office, and there's a process initiated before the resignation announcement that could hold Circuit Attorney Gardner in in indirect criminal contempt. A judge last month called Gardner's office a, quote, rudderless ship of chaos. Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey has also said his attempts to remove Gardner from office will not stop. He said, quote, there's absolutely no reason for the circuit attorney to remain in office until June 1st. We remain undeterred with our legal quest to forcibly remove her from office. Every day she remains in office puts the city of St. Louis in more danger, unquote. And that's where we'll start our conversation with St. Louis Public Radio politics correspondent Jason Rosenbaum. He joins us from the state capitol in Jefferson City on this last week of the legislative session. Jason, welcome back. Thank you for having me. The attorney general's attempt to remove Gardner from office is called Quo Waranto. Remind us of what Quo Waranto is, Jason, and how it's been used in the past. Quo Waranto is a judicial process where either the attorney general or a local prosecutor seeks to remove an elected office holder, um, primarily because they've either either done something uh, blatantly corrupt, like uh, take a bribe, Mm -hmm. or have uh, stopped doing their duty on purpose, which is kind of the term that I've been using multiple times, willful uh, willfully not doing their duty. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you mentioned, this has been going on since February. Uh, the, the, it was announced before Gardner announced her re- resignation that uh, that trial would go forward in September. And Bailey told me that he's not willing to just dismiss the case because Gardner hasn't resigned yet. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I don't think he wants to chance a situation where, uh, and this is unlikely, and I want to make that clear, where he dismisses the case and then she changes her mind and decides not to resign anymore. Uh, so I, I think that's kind of where he's going with that. Okay. I don't think that there's really any feeling that this case is going to continue after she stepped down, after she steps down on June 1st, there is precedent for, uh, attorneys, attorneys general dismissing quo Warantos after office holders resigned. Uh, the last example of that in 2009. Mm-hmm. Now, Bailey said he wants to see the Missouri legislature pass a provision that would bar people in Gardner's situation from running for office again. Tell us more about that, Jason. I, I That has been proposed by several legislators. I don't really think that's going to mean very much in this particular situation. Um, Senate Minority Leader John Rizzo told my colleague uh, Sarah Kellogg, that uh, Gardner is very, very unlikely to run again in 2024 and wants to, quote, move on with her life. But I I think that Republicans here don't, again, similar to what my last answer, they don't even really want to have a chance of that occurring. Um, And they my understanding from from talking with a couple of people is this bill would not only bar somebody who is removed from a quo Waranto from running again, but also somebody who resigns amid a quo Waranto from running again, and that would be Gardner's situation. Mm-hmm. Is this going to be something that is used extremely often? 
probably not, but I think um, it is kind of the replacement for the the provision that would have uh, exerted a lot more state control over the St. Louis Circuit Attorney's uh, office. This is kind of the uh, compromise instead of doing that. Mm-hmm. Now, on the the level of politics, uh, you know, when we talk about Andrew Bailey and Kim Gardner. We're talking about politicians, after all. To what extent do you think politics is involved in what Bailey is doing and and what he has been doing? Well, certainly Bailey's uh, detractors think that the Quo Waranto was was supremely political, and that was the only real reason he was doing it. I think if you talk with Bailey that there were so many deficiencies in this office— that not going through with this would have been malpractice. That's Mm -hmm. sort of his argument. Okay. Especially, especially, and we talked about this before, especially after the revelation that Gardner is taking uh, classes at St. Louis University for for nursing, and we still don't really know how uh, uh, strenuous that is or how many hours she's spending there. Uh, That would have, I think that would have been strong evidence that she was willfully neglecting her duty. So it started off as what a lot of people thought was a long shot case, but especially after that news came about, the consensus was that um, if it had gone forward in September, there would have been a very decent chance that a judge could have found uh, Gardner willfully neglected her duty, and it would have then gone to the Supreme Court to decide finally. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what what did Bailey say then? is the point of continuing his efforts to remove Gardner from office. I mean, the trial isn't set until September 30th. I think that uh, he wants her out of office now. Um, she, he doesn't see any reason for her to wait until June 1st. I even asked him, like, what exactly, why, is it, why does that matter? Mm-hmm. Like, if you wanted Gardner out of office, isn't the date where she's leaving immaterial? And what what he said was, you know, the office is in such chaos and there's no real evidence that she's going to implement anything to change anything between now and June 1st, that you could have more situations with attorneys not showing up for trial because they're so overwhelmed with the caseload or, Mm -hmm. you know, cases having to be uh, dropped and refiled. And what his point is, and I think that the reason why he says he doesn't want to drop the Quo Varento is that. With, with Gardner in office, you really can't start the process of making things better. And um, I think that was it, it is a message that he's sending, even if he ends up dismissing it after June 1st. Mm-hmm. We're talking here with Jason Rosenbaum, politics correspondent at St. Louis Public Radio, um, catching up on what has happened and what is happening around uh, the resignation of uh, St. Louis County, uh, I'm sorry, with St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner. Now, another thing that the Attorney General said when you talked with him is that he'd be willing to help out uh, the Circuit Attorney's office. And this is where attorneys would come in and help alleviate caseload burden. And St. Louis County Prosecuting Attorney Wesley Bell has also offered to help. Jason, do we know whether Gardner has asked for or otherwise sought reinforcements in the past? Um, my understanding is that it, at least the surrounding, some of the surrounding prosecutors made the offer and it was not reciprocated. Mm. Now, I don't know if that is uh, because Gardner has not confirmed or denied that sort of thing. Like we're kind of in the dark about what the full story is. But I think what is uh, which what is not in doubt is if if there wants if there is going to be an effort. It, let me let me put it this way. If 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 people want the caseload in the city to go down, there's going to need to be a pretty rapid infusion of temporary people taking up these cases. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the most obvious thing that you could do is that Gardner's successor could ask surrounding regional prosecutors to lend attorneys to do that. As well as the as well as the attorney general's office, because the attorney general has a number of attorneys that go into counties when they're asked to. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I understand that the city of St. Louis is very democratic. I'm sure a lot of residents do not like the idea of primarily Republican uh, prosecutors and the Republican attorney general. Um, 
you know, bringing their people in here. And obviously, Leslie Bell is a Democrat and he's offered to do the same thing. So it would be a bipartisan infusion. Mm -hmm. But as we've talked about before, the issues in the circuit attorney's office are so dire and they're also creating a lot of constitutional crises, crises, especially with defendants right to a fair trial, that I think this is really the only way you can start really rapidly taking up this this caseload and winnowing it down. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten any sense over the last several days that Gardner chose June 1st to make transition for the office smoother in some way? I I don't know. Hmm. She hasn't made herself open to reporters. Mm -hmm. We would love to ask her that question, but we can't read her mind. Right, right. So I I don't know the answer to that question. Governor Mike Parson is now in charge of naming Kim Gardner's replacement. We know it's only been a handful of days since Gardner announced her resignation. But do you have any idea whom he might name or at least who he has in mind? I think that there is an increasing consensus that uh, Parson is going to choose a Democrat for mm-hmm. this position. And is and the goal is not necessarily to pick somebody who aligns with the Re- Republican Party on criminal justice issues, but somebody who can get into that office, uh, establish some stability and potential and have at least a chance of winning a full term in 2024. Mm. Now, this may seem counterintuitive to a lot of people because Parson is a Republican and he may not, you know, people may be like, why does he want to appoint like a Democratic person when he could just appoint a Republican? The obvious answer is if he does that, that person will lose election automatically. The city of St. Louis is not going to elect a Republican circuit attorney, even if that person does um, an incredible job. Uh, I don't see, I I mean, if I I have to be super hyperbolic, I don't (laughs) see the city of St. Louis electing a Republican office holder again in my lifetime. Oh, wow. Because it's just that democratic. Okay. So, so Parson has to real, Parson is a very, is not blind to that reality. Mm -hmm. I think that all the serious people I've heard so far have been Democrats. They're probably not going to be as uh, quote unquote progressive as, say, uh, you know, Board of Aldermen President Megan Green is. But Mm -hmm. I I do think that there is kind of an attempt to satisfy a lot of different interests here, including Democratic interests. Yeah. Jason, who's going to want this job in this moment or, you know, to take it at the very least? But that's a great question. I mean, there has been some conjecture that Parson may offer this to a judge. Like one person that's been brought up a number of times is Judge Michael Noble, who mm. was the person that brought up the rudderless, rudderless. <laughs> uh, ship of chaos. But I was just sort of thinking, like, why would he want to do that? Like, why would he want to leave a judgeship to try and, you know, right the ship, so to speak, to mm. continue on that analogy, even though... Judge Noble is a is a graduate of West Point and not part of the Navy. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think I, I do understand that maybe some judges would want to do this maybe as a placeholder. But I, I can't really imagine that they are that politically ambitious where they would want to step down from what is essentially a, a lifetime position mm-hmm. where they don't really face a lot of scrutiny and they can pretty much stay in that position as long as they want to. To go into something that will have a lot of scrutiny, where they're not guaranteed to win next year. Right. I think I, I think it's going to have to be somebody who not only like wants to do the job and feels like they have a mission to straighten the office out, but also is ambitious enough to stay for the long haul. Mm-hmm. It's 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 it. There are people like that, but the only people that would fit that scenario are Democrats. Like you could be. You can be a Republican in St. Louis City and maybe you're all you're kind of the unicorn where you're a Republican lawyer, but you're not going to win election next year. So I, I just don't think that if you're trying to stabilize the office, that's really a good idea for Parson. Jason Rosenbaum is the politics correspondent for St. Louis Public Radio. Thank you so much for that update, Jason. Thank you. Today's episode was produced by Alex Hoyer. Audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dort. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here.
Our podcast proudly supports St. Louis artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.